Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Bill and Bob. So, Sunday marked the... Sunday was an important day this year. First day of the Major League Baseball season. And Monday was the opening day for the other teams. Sunday, uh, first game Sunday was the St. Louis Cardinals and the Chicago Cubs. You know, Adam Wainwright versus John Lester. Great pitching matchup. And uh, but John Lester didn't really do so well. You know, he ended up losing the game. Cubs also game 3 nothing. But then the uh, opening day for other teams started on Monday, yesterday. And uh, it's been very interesting. Uh, we're going to talk about certain things that happened on opening day, certain things we noticed about players and events that happened during the game. So... Uh, Bill, why don't you just start us off? Please. Well, um, Rob, I'm sure that you probably watched the opening night game, Cubs-Cardinals at Wrigley. And I was looking forward to the matchup, Adam Wainwright versus John Lester, but John Lester disappointed me. You know, Theo Epstein and the Cubs spending six um, six years, $155 million contract on him, and he doesn't get through the fifth inning. And that's ridiculous right there. Well, but, you know, here's the thing. You know, it's first game. Yeah, um, yeah, first game, first game. But, but First time know. being in the National League, you know, jitters, it happens. Uh-huh. And also going up against the Cardinals, you know, the, yeah. the Yankees of the National League. Yeah. You know, so. But yeah. also, I was I was looking for that first home run of the season there, but all the balls are dying before they even get to the warning track at Wrigley Field. But let's talk about the Yankee game. Uh, Alex, <laughs> I know you hate Alex Rodriguez, A Rod, no, no, but like him, he <laughs> he performed very well yesterday, one for two with a walk, and um. I think he's going to do very well this season, coming off a hot spring training. Lost, they lost six nothing. No? And uh, I think he's going <laughs> to, I think he's going to regain his third base position. Chase Headley with a throwing error, not doing so well at the plate. You tell me what you think. First game, remember that. If the first game is only what 161 left. Yeah, that's 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 a whole bunch. So <laughs> okay, okay. Friday night, no, fire, Friday night, we'll make our observations. Don't count your eggs for the hatch. That, you know, that's, that's what they say. But um, sure, A Rod. Excuse me. Alex Rodriguez might have gotten his one for two, <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> you got to talk about Masahiro Tanaka, you know, I don't know how many runs he gave up. Oh. No, didn't, no, he he sucked. I mean, giving up that home run to Edwin Encarnacion. Edwin Encarnacion. Edwin, Edwin I'm yeah, I'm not Spanish, so I don't really pronounce <laughs> yeah, that well. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but, um, Word lib right there. You know, uh, he didn't really perform well. Um, actually, one thing I didn't notice about the game, like outside of the uh, off the field, was the four train. Uh, I heard yeah. that the yeah. the four train going to Yankee Stadium actually had the vintage um train cars. You mm-hmm. know, going to Yankee Stadium, I find that pretty cool. You know, I don't really know how it would work. Would it go all the way down to Manhattan? You know, with that, I find it kind of weird. But you know, I thought that was that was pretty interesting. And um, you have then then you have my team who is down in D.C. playing the Nationals, a team that they rarely beat, unfortunately. But you know. It's opening day, and you know how you know how the Mets are on opening day. Best opening day record of all time. Six forty one percentage. Yeah, thirty four and nine. Followed up by the Yankees. 30, now thirty five and nineteen. Followed up time. by the Yankees, but who gets the job done in October? <laughs> no, you notice how I was on my opening day, right? <laughs> okay. And you're it's about past championships. We don't talk about the wins that matter. And you're you're sitting on my past championships. Right, let's go. Anyway, like I was saying, um, first game, you know, the Mets play the Nationals team that they don't beat that often, and Max Scherzer, who is a Cy Young candidate last year now plays for Washington and he was expected to, you know, perform really well against the Mets. And then the Mets interestingly started Bartolo Colon, the 41 year old Aegis Wonder. <laughs> you know? Um, and Colon out dueled him. All Colon really gave up was a solo home run of Bryce Harper. And um, Scherzer, he played well. He, he pitched well for most of the game, but then he just lost it in a sixth, you know, or seventh. And. You know, he ended up losing the game. You know, there wasn't really any breakout performances, you know. But, you know, they got the job done, you know, so. No, I think that the Nationals, in the beginning of the season, they're going to run their record up going up against teams like the Marlins and the Mets. Oh, the Marlins. Uh, yeah, the, the, Mar- the Marlins and the Mets, they're going to be middling teams at best this season. At best. Oh, where'd you get your baseball analysis from? <laughs> okay, you tell me what what your predictions are for the NL East. Marlins, they're gonna be a lot better. Than, I don't, I'm not gonna say a lot better. They're gonna be better than middling. Mets, same thing, better than middling. The Braves are gonna be a middling team if anything. That team lost so many players, and they're actually starting to go downhill fast. You know, they got rid of Craig Kimbrell, their their star closer. And in San Diego. and he, also you got the Phillies in that division. The, the Phillies, Phillies are predicted to be dead last. The Phillies by are horrible. Some people. They're horrible. Yeah, they're uh, bad. I, that's one thing I do about baseball. <laughs> them Phillies are terrible. Yeah. 
<laughs> it wasn't too long ago that it was the other way around. You know, the Mets yeah. were a terrible team, and the Phillies were, you know, winning the World Series. Now, I'm not gonna say the Mets are winning the World Series yet, but the Phillies are just awful. I mean, the Mets weren't that bad, you know, recently. Or something. Yeah, Jimmy Rollins, he's rolling yeah, in, uh, in, in Hollywood now. So yeah, that was another game, uh, San Diego and LA. Uh-huh. With uh, Matt Kemp returning, Matt Kemp, I think he hit a home run yeah. against uh, uh, yeah. Clayton Kershaw. Yeah, and uh, Jimmy Rollins, I don't know if it was a walk off, but uh, it was a go ahead three run home run to uh-huh. get the Dodgers the win. So. That right, that that was probably the best game of, the, of opening night, opening day, oh, opening night, day, whatever. It's West Coast. Yeah, but um, <laughs> back to opening night. Um, did you see the Ernie Banks tribute for Mr. Cub at Wrigley Field? Oh, no, I actually missed it, to be honest. No, yeah. well, um, here I'll, I'll just give a little personal anecdote right now. Um, Ernie Banks actually is the reason I'm here today, because, well, don't hit everybody the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my parents, they used to go to autograph shows, and they were already dating for like their seventh year at the time. And Ernie Banks did a lot of shows, and I guess he knew them for a while. And they he asked them very innocently uh, how their marriage was. And they weren't married yet. And he says, well, you know, you guys, why aren't you married? He said, my dad said, we just got out of school. We got student debt. We don't have the money for that sort of thing yet. He says... If it's love, it's love. Take care of it. And my parents didn't think of it, but later that week, my dad, he thinks of it, and he just pops the question, so to speak, to my mom. And three months later, they're married, and two years later, I'm here on Earth. So, thank you, <laughs> Mr. Cub. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> Rob doesn't think it's that nice. I, no, guess. I, I do, I do. <laughs> Rob is a romantic. You'll see him around campus. He'll look at you like he has a gun in his pocket. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't You'll look. stop on the earth with his tents. Uh, uh, no, I don't look at people. <laughs> no. <laughs> but um, that, that's actually really nice, and I'm glad the Cubs did that. You know, he is Mr. Yeah, Cub. Yeah, yeah. And also, interestingly, I did, one thing I did notice was the Arizona, Car- Arizona Cardinals. The St. Louis Cardinals had a patch on their shoulder that said OT on it for Oscar Tavares, uh-huh. who actually passed away at the end of last season. Yeah. You know, so I, it, it was a, it was very touching. And um, to throw a little comedy in here real quick, not, not about this game, no, no, no. Uh-huh. But for opening night, uh, we all know the Marlins. That organization is just all over the place. And so we all, I don't know if we all know, but they built a new stadium off of Florida taxpayers, by the way. Up by <laughs> Miami-Dade County taxpayers. I mean, I mean, sometimes you look at the Marlins franchise and you wonder, are they run by the Castor brothers? They're so, how, how they went to they're so out of fact. How, how they do it? <laughs> yeah, well, you, you know, that was back when they were playing at... Um, Last one was 03. Sun Life Stadium, so to speak. Yeah, and they were with Josh Beckett and Miggy you know, they, and Dontrell Willis they, they and who else did they have there? They like two fans in the stands, you know. Yeah. I mean, they, they still kind of do, but at least it's nice. I liked <laughs> it better when they were called the Florida Marlins. What do you think? I, I kind of with the Miami. I like the Miami. I don't like the colors. Of the Marcus, Miami, what do you think? Florida or Miami? Miami sounds like? always sounds better. Miami? Well, somebody said they're going to Florida. It could be anything. Florida Marlins with the you but, know, um, green teal instead of the orange color. Yeah, Miami. the colors I don't like. They should have kept the colors. But anyway... Um, I brought this up because very interesting. Uh, you know, the Marlins have a retractable roof stadium, and they were playing the Braves. And I, it's really hard. I, I can't believe it. I'm I have to say this. <laughs> they had a rain delay. They had a rain delay in a stadium with a retractable roof. That right there just proves to you how the Marlins operate. Any anyway, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that that was probably the, the funniest thing that happened over there. You have a retractable roof and a rain delay. You know, it's whatever. But uh, we're now going to go into some. No, but I mean, Robert, Rob, Rob, if and it, there were rain clouds over the stadium. Rob, Huge. Rob, that whole organization there thinking is so illogical. Remember that big debate we were having a few seasons ago? Who's going to play shortstop, Hanley Ramirez or Jose Reyes? Now two seasons later, where neither one of them, neither of them are playing. One of them is not even playing in this country. So, I exactly. mean, you know, uh, the other one's playing on the other coast of this country. Yeah. So, if we look at that organization, you know, they it really is dumped their whole team yeah. because they spent too much. Uh-huh. But we're going to get into something a little more serious. We actually have a lot of time left, but we'll get to it. Chris Bryant. Now, uh, not related to Kobe. Uh, Chris yeah. Bryant is a minor league prospect. Who He's a, he's a phenom, you know, the best way to put it, in the Chicago Cubs farm system. And um, what they're doing to him is, in my opinion, a sports travesty. They're basically, you know, they could have brought him up this season. They should have. You know, any smart manager would know that he'd be best if the he'd be it'd be best if he was brought up to the Cubs. But however, however, with the way 
business is set up in Major League Baseball, he has to stay. They, they got to keep him in the minors for 12 days. Now, exactly. That's like a lot, just so they could pay him minimum until an extra for an extra year. Yep. That 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 right there just and, and we were sitting here talking about how clean professional sports was, you know, compared to college sports. Now this isn't really cheating, but this is just you know, I I, I don't even have a word for for how bad this looks for Major League Baseball. You know, you really hear any, you really hear bad things about the sport. You know, with the exception of like steroids or something. But this this is this right this what this proves really is that Major League Baseball is more about business than it is about you know athletic competition. Yep. You know, what what are, what are your words on it? Or if you have any, you could chime in. But well, Demarcus, you go first. Well, I feel you know if he's good and. You know, he could play in the major league right now. Move him up and not worry about that minimum salary. But you know, that's that's pretty messed up. I'll be mad if I was him. Yeah, he he actually did show some frustration. He actually explained how how he's upset. He put in all this work, you know, to become like one of the best prospects in base. Probably the best prospect in baseball, no doubt about it. Wow. And that he's you know not coming up as well. It's twelve days. Man, I seem like a lot, but that's not really what the debate's about. You know, Isn't Scott, Scott Boris uh, his agent? Oh, I'm not really sure. I, I think he is, and you know Scott Boris gives front offices around the league headaches. But I think that this Rob is an example of uh, corporate evil that we see all throughout America, where all of a sudden the employer they basically uh, scheme the employees, so to speak, and where they just take all the money that they don't really deserve from the people that are actually producing the product on field. And we we see it all the time where you'll see, um, here 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 for example we'll bring up the mass communications industry where we'll see an owner of a newspaper company say, okay we're gonna cut the editorial staff or whatever by half, and we're gonna get more money from the ads and we're just gonna put it into our pocket. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile these people they could barely write a sentence and if it was up to them to control the industry they wouldn't understand anything. Could Theo Epstein hit a ball out of Wrigley? I don't think so. Exactly. Chris Bryant, he's hitting what? What was it? Four ninety five or something in the spring yeah, training. Yeah, like fifteen home runs. Fifteen home runs in no, March. Right. In March. Well, yeah, I don't know if it's fifteen. I forget the number. But I, I think it was nine. nine but nine, whatever. Nine. He, he was it's putting up. Nine. He was putting up mind blowing and staggering. I think stats. it was nine home runs and forty five at bats. Staggering stats. And I here, if we really want to go talk about the debate in this country about uh, wages, and I think that it is um, a debate that we should have. Then why don't we talk about the debate of people that are not being paid the wages they deserve. We see all the time people that have gone through school, doctors and lawyers and teachers and everyone else. They aren't especially, especially teachers, high school teachers. Yeah, teachers, they're getting paid what? Wages that they aren't able to live on. But everyone wants to go talk about the person that is getting dollars on the pennies, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And Chris Bryant, this guy, okay, it's hard to feel... Uh, sympathy for a guy that, at the very minimum, is going to get what four hundred thousand dollars a year. But if the guy's in baseball, that's chump change. <laughs> exactly. If the guy yeah, deserves, the guy deserves millions of dollars one year, and that's what people want to pay him. People should get let paid. him get what he wants to get paid. People should get paid what they deserve. Exactly. You know, and I know I, I love I love football. You know that. I can uh, bring this up in the NFL. You know, Demarco Murray. He had a great season for the Dallas Cowboys, and rather than paying him, they decided to get rid of him because they didn't want to. Pay, pay, you know, pay him the money so he went to Philly. Hmm. And also, this whole thing about, you know, not paying athletes for your own, for just, I understand that you want to be able to have money as an organization, but if players perform, they deserve to get paid, you know? Hmm. Russell Wilson is still making less than a million. You know, they haven't, they haven't done a deal yet. Actually, they, they might have done a deal, but for a long time, he was paid less than a million, and he really deserved to be paid a lot more than a million. Yeah, and, so that, that right there is just... Proven. Yeah, and, and Rob, I know that all these professional organizations, that they're all, they all have their lobbying uh, foundations and firms to get involved politically and everything. But if you want to talk about real equality and everything, make sure that your employees, first and foremost, are um, treated equally and fairly. Because I think that you're just a hypocrite if you go out there saying, oh, the government doesn't treat people fairly, if you don't even treat your own people fairly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I, I, I don't really see um, America as really being a place where we can tolerate hypocrites. And Theo Epstein, I think that 
you know, in 12 days, I'm sure Chris Bryant, yeah, he's really going to go learn all the baseball skills necessary to go play in the majors. Come on, that's that's one heck of a joke. I mean, he... From, that from, guy, from that guy, he would have been parking balls out regularly. From a statistic, Sunday night, perhaps. A, well, in the empty bleachers because no construction. Yeah. But, um, he already has the major league skills. He Bring does. He does. You know? So move uh, him up. So uh, that ends our show for today. Uh, we want to thank again Demarcus Miller for coming on the show. No thank problem. You, no problem. Thank you, Demarcus. And um, we are signing off. Uh, go Gales. Let's go Mets. <laughs> go Yankees and go Crusaders. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And go Seawolves. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we'll be back next Tuesday.